Hi everyone, my name's Brooke. Um, uh, until not long ago, I was a freelance writer, narrative designer and producer. Um, and I've since started up a company called Burning Glass Creative, offering those services as well as uh, pitching and game design to uh, indie studios and game makers. Um, the reason being is because narrative and production um, uh, while important, not always super necessary for the whole project. For example, if only because indie studios have a small budget and they still need to, uh, you know, have someone managing their time, um, but they might not need that person full time. So that's when I might pop in and help them with that and give big picture advice. But today I'm actually talking about narrative, which is my passion, storytelling. So let me kick off. Oh, it's already on the slide. Well, brilliant. Um, so I do love storytelling, and I want to use an example of a game that I've been working on for two years called The Gardens Between, um, which is an adventure puzzle game um, where you move time back and forth to solve puzzles. And it's a story about uh, two friends, Arena and Friend, who um, are faced with a problem in the real world. Arena and her family are moving away, and they're Friendship is going to be separated, so they fall into this beautiful world of gardens and they learn to accept that separation and then they come back to the real world able to solve that problem. So um, this talk is about narrative design and narrative design, I wanted to emphasise, is not necessarily writing, but writing and narrative design serve one another very well. Uh, so working in larger studios, a narrative designer may have a team of writers where they will write briefs for them, um, they will talk about storyboards, story bibles, they will have character profiles, for example, which is some of my um, kind of sterling prose. Um, <laughs> it's not necessarily needs to be amazing, but it does need to convey an idea to the rest of the team. Um, so, what I've done to prepare for the Gardens Between, I've been a part of brainstorms about the story to figure out the kind of story we want to tell, figuring out what's important to the team as well, um, and making sure that comes across in the story. So, narrative designers help design uh, the key components of the game that help tell the story. So, this can be the environment, the world, the gameplay, uh, and narrative and gameplay have a very symbiotic relationship. Sometimes you will begin a game with a story you want to tell, and other times you will begin with a mechanic that you would also like to have a story in there as well. So sometimes you lead with game design, and sometimes you'll lead with narrative. Um, so narrative designers too um, then talk to artists and think about what their character concepts might look like um, and how we might show these characteristics of the characters that I'd mentioned in the, uh, in the descriptions and how that might come across. So immediately, uh, especially for The Gardens Between, which by the way is a game with no text or speech, so very much what I do is narrative design within the game, but also all of my writing is really for my team and help them to um, understand the story that we're trying to tell and the narrative points that we need to hit for that to come across and then how we can convey it with the artwork. So I wanted to talk about this beautiful game because um, it's a good example. And this artwork is uh, done by Jonathan Swanson and um, Josh... Bradbury, Henrik Pedersen, all of my team basically who um, make this happen and make this story happen with these beautiful images. So this is a meditative observational adventure puzzle game as well. So one of my initial struggles was story is about drama, it's about conflict, it's about, you know, all of these big key words that I was sort of um, understood story to be was not necessarily translating to the rest of the team because they were trying to create a slow, meditative, calm experience. Um, but the difference being is that, you know, tension in story doesn't have to mean tension in gameplay. So that's something that I learned about narrative design as well. And also how colour can help uh, tell a story. So when working with this... Um, Game. We have a couple of colour palettes. I actually reached for a 
um, a common story structure uh, called the voyage and return, which you see in Alice in Wonderland, you see in The Wizard of Oz, where a character has a problem in the real world, they fall into this um, mysterious, beautiful place that starts out to be fascinating and wonderful, and then it quickly becomes not so wonderful and they have to get out. Um, and the reason being is because story in games needs to be flexible and iterative and it's also very technical. So um, throughout my process, I've been sitting with the artist to understand his creative direction and what he wants to do, um, thinking about the game design and the kind of puzzles that we have. Um, and I can't tell you how many times this story has changed. The, I guess the message of the story is still the same and the the crux of the story is still the same, but you can use a plot to tell many different stories and you can use um, story you know, to wrap around many different plots, if that makes sense. So understanding where the flexibility is in the story is important because, for example, um, you may run out of time and have to cut a bunch of levels and if those levels had key storytelling elements in them, you need to think about okay, how can we tell the same story, but you know, just with the levels that we now have? <laughs> That's gonna be really tricky. Um, and starting out as a writer, just working by myself, I was maybe really precious to begin with, and it was like, oh, I'm writing all of these words and these um, you know, short stories and poems and things, and no one's reading them. And oh, come on, you know, just you know, read my story. Um, but the words were great and capturing a mood, but they weren't necessarily helping the team tell the story in engine. Um, so I very quickly learned that um, I really just needed to talk dot points and then I needed to think about what we could use to show the story. Um, so this is about halfway through the narrative where things are getting a little bit dire and tricky for our main characters and then this is towards the end of the game. So using very clear colour palettes to tell the story and this is all story design um, and not a word really has been written here on the screen so far. And this is the crux of narrative design and probably why it's a great project to, to use as an example to talk about narrative design. So it's important because narrative designers keep the story consistent and they fight for it um, and have it come through in every aspect of the game. So as opposed to keeping my you know, lengthy story documents and words and you know, short stories, I had just the Google Drive was just full of little stories. Um, I prototyped levels out of Lego and wrote little bits of poems for them um, because I find that form a good way to capture an idea, not because I'm a wonderful poet. Um, and then in the end, after I guess about a year and a half, I came to a realization that I needed to pitch the story, I needed to advocate for it, I needed to stick up for it a little bit, you know? So um, I created this for my team. Uh, this is up in the office where um, I've mapped the voyage and return to the game using the artist's concept work, um, using some of the ideas the game designer had and sort of put them in there. So I came to this point where I was like, oh, I, need to, I need to communicate what I, why this is so important, why we kind of need a bit of a beginning, middle and end without, when we don't have uh, words to tell the story. So I put together a PowerPoint presentation that looked very similar to this and when it was sort of approved, um, I put it up in the office so that everyone could see that yes, we are telling a story and this is what it looks like. Um, and this is the trajectory. Um, this has changed a little bit, but not a lot. There's generally still uh, a structure there for Arena and Friend and what's going on. As to how much story we can tell, we don't know, but we're pretty confident with what we have. So, narrative design is important and uh, because you need to know, I guess, the nuts and bolts of story, but also the design part of it is being visual for your team and understanding how to communicate the story to them. Um, I would recommend if narrative design is a thing you're interested in, um, understand story th um, things like plot, uh, structure, motif, um, metaphor, characterization, plot, story, um, all of these things will help you, um, help you understand what you're doing, but your team might not necessarily speak those words, so understanding what their storytelling language is, is good too. Um, 
having a technical understanding is also really helpful. Um, my team were really lovely and allowed me to get in engine and move things around to understand how we're telling story and how players are moving through the 3D space. So I no longer started crafting, you know, big adventure moments that we just couldn't possibly put in our level because I wasn't, that understanding wasn't getting there. Um, and the biggest important part of a narrative designer is being the conduit between design and other writers if you're on a large team. So constantly updating story documents to make sure that everything is staying within canon if things change. Um, what some tips I would give if you'd like to get into writing or narrative design for games is to, first of all, keep writing. You will um, inevitably get better at it, very much like Kalonika said earlier, by doing it and by loving it. The next one is um, find story solutions that are cheap and easy to work with. So part of my job is to be really creative and to be able to tell a really clear story um, by not requesting a massive list of art assets, basically, because you will quickly stress out the team. So, for example, I wrote a little adventure scene where they got to the top of the garden and Arena slipped and then Henrik, uh, Henrik <laughs> um, friend reached out and grabbed her and pulled her back up. And uh, I was speaking to Henrik and Henrik said, that's really great, yeah, um, we can probably lift an arm at some point in this game and uh, we better make it a really good arm lift. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> so understand the limitations of your team as well in terms of the time uh, and budget. And communication skills are king. So being able to pitch and um, talk about your story confidently is a good thing as well. Um, and being able to stand behind your decisions for the story, but also being flexible enough um, to accommodate the rest of the team. So it's very collaborative, it's very iterative, and it's a lot of problem solving, um, and it's heaps of fun. The other thing I would leave off with is that it's really important to find out if you're on a game writing project or on any project, you know, where you're bringing story to the table is to first of all decide if you are telling someone else's story or if someone would like you to come up with the story um, because they can be two completely different things. Um, people might say, I've got this story I want to tell and I just need you to help me, you know, plot that out. Um, and then they might say, we need a story, please come up with one and then you've got some more creative license to do that, if that makes sense. Um, so that is my quick summary of narrative for the Gardens Between. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and please come and ask me more questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brooke. That was awesome.